This is a heat transfer problem and we are working with some kind of device that is used as a preheater. It has a bank of tubes inside it. We have a 196 tubes arranged in a square pattern. Now inside the tubes we have steam condensing at 100 degrees Celsius. Now what does that mean? It means that since we have phase change the temperature along these tubes is constant so every part of these tubes it's all a hundred degrees Celsius so that's our TS now we also know that here's the inlet and air is passing through the system this is our inlet and our air temperature here is 25 degrees Celsius and here's our outlet and this temperature we don't know we also know our velocity for the air 5 meters per second at uh, pressure of 1 atmosphere. Now we know that the diameter of these tubes is 10 millimeters. We have an aligned array so it's not staggered it's aligned. As you can see here I draw a few of them but I couldn't draw 196 of them but it gives you an idea of the arrangement. Now we also know some geometric features like here the distance between the tubes in a transversal direction is equal to the direct uh, to the length of the distance between the tubes in the longitudinal direction and both of these are equal to 15 millimeters now they want us to find the total heat transfer uh, to the air the heat rate total heat transfer rate to the air and the pressure drop associated with the airflow through the system. Now to start I just calculated these two. Since they said it's a square pattern we know that the number of rows and number of lines is gonna be equal. So there you go. We can calculate these two right off the bat. And uh, let's get started with our uh, rate of heat transfer. So immediately we should have an idea of what's going on. This is convection, right? We have air flowing over on the outside of something, a geometric feature that's going to be an external flow. And just from the setup, we can tell that this is one of our special cases where we are dealing with a tube bank. So all our formulas that we're going to need, we're going to take it from that section. Now, here it is in in this section our heat rate is actually comes with a formula that's based on a per length basis so in order to transform it into a rate of heat transfer not a per unit basis because this would have a unit of watts per meter right we just want a simple watt so in order to achieve that, we're going to use this formula where heat rate equals heat rate per unit length times length. This way the length cancels out. All we have is heat rate. Here it is. I plugged this into this and this is our current formula that we're going to be working with. Now let's take a look. Do we have everything or not? N is the number of tubes and that one we have 196 so we can mark as we know it H our heat transfer coefficient for convection we do not have that one so that's gonna go with the question mark pi we know the diameter we know uh, and the log mean temperature difference uh, we do not know that's another thing we need to find the length, the length is given. We know e all these tubes are one meter long. So, all right, we know that one. So there's two big things that we need to find. This and this. So let's get started with our heat transfer coefficient. We're going to rely on Zakauskas's correlation. Oh, sorry if I didn't pronounce that name correctly, but that's the guy's correlation that we're going to be using here. And here it is. I've wrote it up. And let's take a look. What do we have? We are looking for H, right? So this is what we are interested in. And diameter we know. K we don't know. So we're going to have to find it in our property tables. 
prompter number. We have two of them, so we're gonna have to find those. We're gonna have to find the Reynolds number max. Okay, so we're gonna have to pay attention to this one. And we have some coefficients here that we're gonna have to look up in some tables. Now, first let's uh, look up C1 and M. So when we go to the tables, we see that in order to get these two, we're gonna be we're gonna need to find our Reynolds number max. So we have to go back and do that first. Here's the Reynolds number formula. So, but when we write it up, we see that we have V max here. We have V given, but that's just our V. We need V max, maximum velocity within the system. So we're gonna have to write up its own formula. We can take a look. We have ST, we have D and we have a V. We have everything we need so we can find our V max. And based on this, now we can come here and find our Reynolds number max. But again, first let's find this kinematic viscosity, our property from tables. And for this occasion, we're gonna need it at uh, the infinite temperature. Here it is. Kinematic viscosity, 15.8, 10 to the negative six. Now let's plug it in. And we can find our Reynolds number of 9494. Now that we have our Reynolds number max, we can go to our tables in our textbooks, or you can even go to this guy's research paper and find it in there. But the point is we have C1 and we have M. Now we need to find C2. Same process as here. We're just gonna go to a different table. And C2 is dependent on NL. And since we have less than 20, we're gonna have to find a coefficient for it. Above, 10, above 20 will be just simply one, but below it, it's gonna have a value. So for this one, we're gonna estimate it from the table 0 0.99. Now here I solve for H from here. It's practically uh, right here, sorry. We're gonna use this part and this part. We're gonna solve for H. And there you have it. Now let's go find the properties that we still miss. There we have it. We're gonna look them up in property tables and make sure that you have all the properties at T infinite except Prompter number that's marked specifically that needs to be found at the surface temperature. Okay. So that's the only one that's not at infinite. Now we come back to this formula and plug everything in. I kind of ignored most of my uh, units because if I don't, this will be super long. But here we have it. Everything plugged in, calculated. We have a H value of 200 watts per meter square Kelvin. Well, actually, no, I think I have all my units. Yep, these are these are all unitless. So there you go, all the units are there. So 200 watts per meter square Kelvin. Now we have our H. We go back to this formula and we need to work on our log mean temperature difference right here, delta T L M. So we write up our formula for that. And here we can analyze it and we can see that we have all that we need except the outlet temperature well actually question mark this is the only one we don't have we have ts we have ti ts we have yeah to the outlet temperature from our system that's the only one we don't have so we're gonna write up yet another correlation right here and here we know everything the only thing uh, we can uh, we need to calculate is to now if you want to look ahead and see what's uh, happening here, you can see that TO is not by itself. It's always TS minus TO and over here too, TS minus TO. So if you don't want to just go straight out and find TO by itself, you can solve this equation for TS minus TO and plug that in, replacing both of them at the same time. But I, I'm going to 
go ahead and calculate just the value for TO. I'm going to go ahead and solve for TO right here from that equation. Now, everything that we see here, we have plugged in. Our properties, the density and CP, we still didn't find them, so let's go ahead and find them. There it is, and remember that these two need to be found at t infinite. Now we go ahead and calculate this, and we can find a exit temperature, TO, equals 72.3 Celsius. Now we can go ahead, come back here, and find our log mean temperature difference. Here it is. We find 47.49 degrees Celsius. Now that we finally have everything we need for this formula, we can finally focus on our heat rate. And let's go find that. I went ahead, plugged everything in. And after calculating, we can find our sought after value of 58,480 watts. Now for the second question of the problem, they want us to find the temper, uh, sorry, the pressure drop through the system, but on the air side, okay, not inside the tubes where we have the condensation happening, but on the air side. Here's our formula that we can use from spe specifically from the tube bank section. This is the only one we have. We have X and F. These are two unknowns, friction factor and friction factor and correction factor, but these two, we're going to go ahead and find them in property tables, actually charts, not property tables. I did two rough sketches right here. We can see how roughly the charts looks like. Uh, this is for the friction factor. We're going to need our RE, Reynolds number, but the max one. And we already found it in the for the previous question, so we know that one. We can simply get it, plug it in here. But first, we need these two, PL and PT. Simply plug in the values, we find them, and then we can find our friction factor. F equals 0 0.33. Now we are estimating here, so it shouldn't be a big problem that you estimate 0 0.30, 31, 2, 3, 4, you're estimating. Same thing uh, goes for this guy, the X, which is a correction factor. We're going to estimate it from this chart. Again, we're going to have to calculate this correlation out. Then we can use our Reynolds number, the max, and find our X, which we can estimate to be roughly at 1. Now, again, these are just rough sketches. Now, looking at our formula, NL we have, X we have now, we have the, our density v max we calculated two and the friction factor we have everything so let's go ahead and find our pressure difference here it is you can go ahead and plug everything in on your own and then we are able to find a temperature dif a pressure difference of 608 newtons per meter square now obviously this will be a little bit lower or higher because a lot of estimation comes into play like here, 0.33, or this one. So my number might be a little bit different than yours, but it should be roughly in the same ballpark. 